In this video, I'll demonstrate how I created a self-opening and closing electric cover for my swimming pool. And it can also be used as a floor to walk on top of. Some time ago, I showed you how I made my mini pool in the garden of my house. Since I had a patio attached to the garden, I decided to use it to place a 2 meter pool, more or less 180. I made an enormous hole and buried it entirely there, but now the problem came. My purpose is to use all the possible space in the most efficient way and have a pool. Does this ruin it? Since you can't use it for anything else because you have the pool there, that is, you can only use it for getting into the pool. So I thought, what if I made a system where I could cover the pool and have a floor to walk on above it? Put a table, for example, or keep using it as a patio. I started thinking about some options. The first was to install a floor that would slide to one side with the help of some guides, wheels, and stuff like that. But I had a big problem. This is mounted on some metal guides, and since I had to move it towards the garden, the guides would be on the grass, and they wouldn't look really ugly. The other option I chose is to make a folding system, a deck that folds in half and folds against the wall. That way it's nice and functional. First of all, I had to make a base that can support good weight, but at the same time not be too thick. For that, I used structural iron of 22 by 22 millimeters and 1.6 millimeters thick. I welded it to make a base that is larger than the pool. I got it about 2.5 meters by 2 meters. Since it has to fold in the middle, I welded two large metal hinges every 40 centimeters. I put another structural iron to create a good base where to put all the boards on top and that it doesn't bend or anything, that it stays there very firm. To protect it from corrosion and rust, I painted it with rust converter, a paint that prevents both the formation and expansion of rust. It also eliminates any that may already have been generated. And once everything was painted, I screwed on the wood deck on top. I used a eucalyptus deck screwed in with uh, self-drilling screws for metal. And I varnished it so that it wouldn't get ruined by the water and also for protection. I placed it on the pool and began weight tests. My friends and I stood on it, and everything worked well. Since it has lots of support anchors, basically on all sides, it is grounded. But well, that was also coming. The complicated part had to be that it opens and closes in an electrical and automatic way. I saw people make these type of systems, and they open them by pulling a rope that comes out, just like from the middle of the floor, pulling upwards. This would actually be very easy to make, but it looks horrible. And um, not to mention that maybe uh, you're, you're walking, you trip over it, and just like that, you hurt yourself badly. I devised another system and ended up with this one. What if I were to place a rope that goes underneath the system and pull from one end? That way, the system would fold itself and the rope would continue winding in the motor. Then, by releasing the rope, the system would fold back again under its own weight. And did you have in mind the best engine to do this? This is a Wincher rigging. An engine that has a built-in gear system, which gives it a lot of strength and is used to lift things. In fact, I was happy with the cheapest one, which exerts 125 kilos of force, nothing more. I placed the engine at one end of the system. First, I marked the area where I planned to place it, which happened to be the space between the pool's end and the wall. So I began installing it there in the back. So what I did was break the floor, let's say, to make a hole for the engine to fit. After this, I needed to secure the engine inside the hole. On the back side, it has its own system for gripping, let's say, like some anchors. So inside the well, I just put a structural pipe secured to each side with concrete. This way it will never come out again. Once the engine is firmly gripped inside the well, I pass the steel cable through the start of the folding system via a pulley, then through the final end, again through another pulley. And uh, I went back and anchored the cable again at the beginning. This back and forth has a reason. And that is because, in this way, we benefit from the pulley principle, a simple concept that allows us to easily double a mechanical force. To better understand, let's pause and revisit the past by watching a video I really like that explains it well. Two people each hold a segment of rope, so they share the elevation equally, 
each of them needs to lift with only half the force. The exact same thing happens if one end of the rope is fixed to something that doesn't move. If you're lifting the other end, you also need to lift with a force equal to just half the weight of the load. Suppose you combine the fixed pulley and the movable pulley to get the advantages of both. The movable pulley still doubles your force and at the same time the fixed pulley allows you to pull downwards. It is really a simple machine that makes the task of lifting easier by incorporating a pulley into the mechanism. Now our engine exerts 250 kilograms of force double, but it also goes at half the speed as before. This is also like the sacrifice we have to make. At the end of the system where the engine is, it's anchored to the ground using two hinges. This way, it stays in place and doesn't move. And on the other side, I put very hard plastic wheels so they can resist and thus it can roll freely while it opens or closes. To grab the wheels, I had to make, let's say a support, by bending a metal plate. And then, once it had the shape, I made a hole to pass it through. A screw that would go through the center of the wheel, and then was it ready to be directly welded onto the pool structure? But now, we had another problem. The motor was not able to open the floor when it was completely closed. As when it is completely flat, it has nothing to pull, it needs to be opened a little bit in order to start working. So I did the following. Right in the middle of the folding floor where the hinges were, I put a small structure with a Teflon wheel. In the end, I also grabbed this with hinges so it can rotate, and I put an elastic cable on it to keep it tense. So, at 90 degrees from the floor. As shown, the elastic cable is positioned so that when the floor opens, it stops exerting force is no longer at a right angle and begins to bend. And the structure with the wheel would be folded, which would allow the floor to be folded. If it were fixed, when opening, it would crash on the same structure. In this way, when the wheel is closed, it is just above the cable, so the cable is not straight, but bent. And when the motor starts to exert force, as it attempts to straighten the cable, it is going to push upwards push in the Teflon wheel and pushing the floor upwards. This gives the initial angle we need for the floor, for the engine to start exerting the force correctly. And we circumvent this obstacle we had at the beginning. We had almost everything ready, now it was left to automate it. The winch comes with a control with a button to open and close. So by disassembling it, we could use these same contacts to place it wherever we want, like say if we extended the button. Initially, I created a Wi-Fi switch to control it remotely or via a smartphone or perhaps something more futuristic. And honestly, it worked well. I had done some tests and in fact, I had even embedded it in resin, epoxy and all. But with bad Wi-Fi signal, it started to malfunction and began to give me a headache. I thought if I'm going to be there at that moment, I might as well dive in. I prefer a plain ordinary button. So I extended the original cables to a new button, a three position button, which also had a light so it can be seen at night, and which I placed on the wall inside a box that I printed. I printed it using gray play grill on three filament, which is the filament I use for everything lately because it's of excellent quality. But I had to find a way to stop the motor from continuing to apply force. Once it's fully open, it would break if it continued and the same when it's fully closed because it would also break. So I use these, these are end stops or limit switches, and basically they are switches that either enable or cut the current when touched. So I use two of them. I installed them so that one is triggered when the floor opens to the desired position, and the other is triggered when it closes. So it's easy because you connect them to the wire that sends the current to open or close, and that's it. When the floor opens, it moves, and when it moves, it stops receiving current, so it stops. And the same thing happens when it closes. Stop there, give it a final touch. What I did was also paint with anti-rust paint all the parts where I had welded or where any metal was exposed. And I also used graphite grease to apply to all moving parts, the hinges, everything. Basically so that over time, they can continue to move well, so they don't get stuck, and so they don't rust. And this is how it turned out. 
The button has three positions. The middle one, where it doesn't do anything, would be like an off or emergency stop, uh, up to open and down to close. It takes about 30 seconds to open and another 30 seconds to close. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea. Since now I can use the pool and the patio at the same time, I have a lot of space and it also looks quite good to finish next to where the mobile deck ends. I built a continuation of a regular deck, let's say to finish with the complete patio. I'm also doing a bunch of other things in that yard from, for example, a pergola to decoration. I improved the wall, did a lot of things, but all that I leave for the next video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like also. I would like to see what you think in a comment and we'll see us in the next video.